Welcome to Flow State. Um, in this video, I just want to real quick explain the economic relationship between interest rates and inflation, because there's so much of that stuff going on in the news right now. You know, the Fed keeps raising interest rates to the highest it's been in years, and they're doing this in order to combat inflation, um, which everybody is is well aware of, even if you're not keeping track of interest rates. Everybody's aware that inflation's going on and that things are costing more now than they used to. Um, so, for some people, this might be basic, um, but for a lot of people, you know, we're not taught economics in school and uh, economic principles, which are really pretty, um, pretty simple and pretty intuitive, are sort of buried under jargon and hidden from intentionally, I believe, hidden from uh, from people so that they can't understand what's really going on. Now, when the Fed uses interest rates to combat inflation, um, they're not really stopping inflation at all. They're just moving it around. So, inflation, it's important to define inflation properly, um, especially since there's a lot of things that we see them changing the definition on inflation is an increase in prices caused by a devaluation in the currency because of government printing basically i mean essentially that's an essential essential component to remember is that the thing that causes inflation is the printing of money um a lot of t a lot of definitions I've seen now have started excluding that part, ex excluding the causal relationship, and it'll just say something like the increase in prices over time. Well, why do prices increase over time? Because more money has been created into the economy, and to to go after the same amount of goods. If there's ten dollars in the economy, and there's ten apples in the economy, but then I make 10 more dollars, now there's $20, but the same amount of apples, that means everybody who wants to buy an apple for a dollar can only get half of an apple. You have to raise the price on, on apples because there's more money, but not more apples. That's the concept. Um, and that's also the problem with a fiat currency. Fiat means by decree. The government proclaims by decree that, that this money is good for for exchange and debts but when there's a certain amount of money in the economy and then the government decides to print more money each dollar that you have that you've worked for and earned and saved or whatever you've done with it each one of your dollars loses value so the so what it, that essentially is that's why it's called the invisible tax because the government is taking value out of your assets after you've already performed the work to earn those, right? So you, when you earned a dollar, it was worth more than it is now because the government's decided to print more money. Um, and they've had the Federal Reserve do that. So um, once you understand that, that inflation is necessarily driven by government deciding to print, then you can move on to the, to the next part, which is how does that interact with inflation rates? I'm sorry, with interest rates. And the exchange there is real simple. The reason that raising interest rates lowers inflation is not because it's making dollars any more valuable than they were before you printed more money. It's because you have more... It think, it's easier to think about it in terms of, of a household, right? If our household has a thousand dollars a month to live off of and I pay three hundred dollars a month in mortgage in the, for the mortgage and then another hundred dollars a month for a car payment but both of those debts are on variable rate variable interest rates when rates are low that's cost me four hundred dollars a month but as they raise interest rates now my payments got higher so instead of paying $400 a month for rent or for mortgage and vehicles, now I might be paying $500 a month 
for the same things. So I'll have less disposable income to spend on goods and services at the store, like milk. I'm buying less milk, for instance, now. And so the milk prices, the retail prices, don't rise because there's not more demand. So essentially what you're doing is when you, go, when you go to the store, when you go to the gas pump, you look at milk, you look at you know, whatever your staples are. Milk and gasoline are the two easy ones because they come in, they come in gallons, right? And people buy them regularly and it's always in a gallon. So it's easy to, um, to remember the price of those things. But when you raise interest rates, you're not making the dollar go further, to act, which would actually combat inflation. What you're doing is you're taking the inflation out of the, out of the retail market, right? And putting it into the, uh, the longer-term assets that people still have. So instead of having to pay more for a gallon of milk, you're having to pay more for your same car. Same gallon of milk, same car. You're paying more either way. It's just, are you paying more in the store? Are you paying more on your debt? Um, credit cards are the worst. If you have credit card debt and they raise the interest rate, you got a big issue. So um, obviously everybody has heard probably, hopefully a thousand times that to pay off your credit card debt. But if you've got credit card debt, <laughs> get rid of that stuff. I don't know. At some point, I'd, I'd, and I mean, this could be financial advice if you want it to be. Um, good luck suing me when things go wrong, but, uh, you know, at some point I think people are almost better off just letting all their debts go and waiting seven years for it to fall off your credit report than they are trying to pay their way out of, out of heaps of credit card debt and, and all that stuff. But anyways, that's another discussion for another video. And this one, mostly what I just wanted to explain was that the way that in raising interest rates means people are spending more money on their debt so they have less to spend in the economy, but the dollar is still cheap in either way. Lowering interest rates means that people are spending less for their homes and for their cars, and that means they have more cash left over after those expenses to spend at the store for retail goods. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, share, do all the things, and actually hit the share button and then copy it. Even if you don't share it anywhere, the way that the YouTube algorithm works, if you click share and then click copy link, it still registers it as, as a share. So you don't even have to share it, even though I'm sure everybody would love to see this video. So anyways, thanks for watching.